Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, people leaving veganism, why they're doing so, why they're doing so in greater and greater number. Um, first, we want to talk about a little bit of success story. So I was in my daily meeting with the uh, folks over at MeetRx.com. We do this every day at 9 a.m. Pacific time. All kinds of people come in on video. Our new, one of our new members from New York stated that he's been on the carnivore diet since the beginning of the year, since World Carnivore Month started. You can still sign up at World Carnivore Month, by the way, at MeetRx.com. Um, he's a diabetic. He type 2 diabetic. He's been on 72 units of insulin a day. And within three weeks, he's now down to zero. Zero insulin off all insulin in a matter of three weeks by going on a carnivore diet. It's pretty damn amazing. And, and it's just awesome to see. Um, we have started at MeetRx.com our weekly challenges. And so go over, sign up for free as a member. You can participate in these week, weekly, some of these are going to be workout challenges and some other things coming as time goes by. So go up and sign up there. All right. This gal behind me, she was uh, sent me a pick before and after pick, uh, before bloated, you know, now she's on carnivore. She says, hi, Sean, you're my biggest inspiration and your carnivore diet has saved my health. I transitioned to keto and now carnivore five months ago. Brain fog, bloat, digestion, skin, anxiety, all gone. Thank you so much she then goes on to say i forgot to mention i transitioned from being a high carb vegan of two years basically eating that diet because i thought it was the healthiest way of eating apparently it is not as many people will say it's another picture this is from my instagram post today uh reposted from i think groups calling themselves our infinite life i think why I'm not vegan anymore. She goes into the reason why she is no longer vegan is now carnivore. Kind of an interesting read. Uh, this article here came out, uh, I guess, a couple days ago. It says, when I was eight, I became a vegetarian. After 17 years, I started eating meat again. This is by someone called Meredith Kirby. And her story is kind of interesting. She said she... She goes on to say, I decided to become an activist joining PETA and placing the meat is murder stickers they sent me everywhere. As an adolescent, I became a fan of the Smiths 1985 album by the same name. Seeing a lack of vegetarian options in my middle school cafeteria, I wrote a letter to the superintendent of the school district asking for changes to the menu. PETA sent me DVD footage from inside of factory farms and the anguished screams of suffering cows, chickens, and pigs became burned into my consciousness. I didn't understand how anyone could possibly eat meat. Over time, I began to realize that the ethics and sustainability of food were much more complicated than I originally thought. It went, I went from a fanatical vegetarian to a more calm vegetarian, to a vegetarian often annoyed by other fanatical vegetarians or vegans who were militant reminders of my own extreme speech and behavior as a kid. I spent time talking with people who saw the meat issue differently from the way I saw it. Once I let myself hold my beliefs more loosely, I began to realize that they often made good points when we discussed the issue. Eventually, I took the plunge and started eating meat again. After toying with the idea of reintroducing meat into my diet for some time, I had a moment of boldness while at brunch with a friend. I decided to order some Canadian bacon on a whim. Anticipating a potential bad response from a digestive system that wasn't used to handling meat, I ate slowly and deliberately. The bacon wasn't the best thing in the world, I decided, but it was pretty good. I felt fine after the meal and didn't end up getting sick after all. On my next trip to the store for groceries, I bought a chicken breast, cruelty. What really started to change my opinion on the cruelty argument was the experience of speaking with people who hunt wild game. Death is also part of the natural cycle of life. Nothing wants to die, but everything does regardless. My own feelings about morality and spirituality changed over time, and my feelings about eating meat again began to change too. Then I learned that the Dalai Lama eats meat 
and that Gandhi, who I thought of as a famous vegetarian, also ate meat sometimes. I learned that plant-based diet didn't totally prevent cruelty to animals either. Many animals are also harmed in the process of, process of plant food production. I also found that I felt better eating this way. A diet that's higher in fat and protein and lower in carbohydrates gives me more consistent energy levels and fewer feelings of hunger and fatigue. Eating meat again also improved my iron levels, which was surprising to me why I ate plenty of iron-rich leafy vegetables as a vegetarian. About 13 to 18% of global human-caused greenhouse gas emissions come from animal agriculture, while 64% come from fossil fuels. In the United States, only 3% come from animal agriculture, while 80% come from fossil fuels. While the meat industry is a, is a factor in climate change, it's not the only factor, and it's definitely not the biggest factor. In fact, even if we stopped all meat production today, the climate would still be in trouble. There are much bigger culprits to worry about when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, so several, you know, vegetarians, vegans, leaving that going back to meat. We see this happening in increasing numbers. We're seeing that these people that get this sort of brainwashing as teenagers and so on and so forth, particularly women, find that, you know, after a few years when their diet fails them and they get sick, they go back to eating meat and find out much improved health. Uh, the point about greenhouse gases, clearly meat is not the biggest driver of greenhouse gases, regardless what vegans say, uh, whether or not that's causing climate change at all. I know people will debate about that. But if you do believe that man is causing climate change, then meat is not what's doing it. And certainly giving up meat is not going to solve the answer. Now, do we need to continue to improve the environmental impact of animal agriculture and agriculture in general? Yes, of course you do. We still have to eat. We still have to eat both animals and for some people, both animals and plants. Uh, so we need to figure out how to do that in, 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 in a, you know, improve the environmental sustainability uh, it also continued to improve the ethics, and I think that's being done for much of the world, particularly as uh, we, get, we get more awareness about that. Um, you know, this goes to the bigger picture of what's going on. These young folks are being used by, uh, you know, the processed food companies. And now even the meat companies, you guys are talking about the meat industry. Well, what I will say is the major players in the meat industry, at least in the United States, that would be Tyson Foods, Cargill, um, JBS, and now Maffrig, which has bought National Beef, they're redefining themselves as protein companies. So not just meat. They're now going to be pushing plant-based meats, synthetic meats, and you guys that are vegans are supporting this. You guys that are pushing for this are basically, all you're accomplishing is making more processed food options available. Uh, and more market, growing the market for these guys. And they're very happy to support you guys. And they will green wash, health wash, ethics wash their products, uh, you know, using you guys as sort of uh, useful idiots for that movement, those guys that are vegan. So anyway, what the answer needs to be and should be is a push for uh, regenerative style agriculture, uh, support, direct support of our local ranchers and farmers, stepping away from the corporate folks that are, you know, making all this processed food uh, at a high profit, guys. That's, that's as simple as it is. And so veganism, while you, you may have good intentions, your results are pretty abysmal, uh, and you're ultimately harming your own health and harming the health of other people that follow you along. So uh, if you really wanted to, be an ethical person and really wanted to limit or minimize animal suffering, you know, clearly all you have to do is support regenerative agriculture. You know, regenerative ag animal agriculture will ultimately lead to the least number of animal suffering and death. You know, that's just the bottom line. All right, guys. Have a great day. Uh, we'll talk to you on the next video and take care.